applause for Mark. He always does a great job, and you should get, you should definitely take Mark up on his offer. ValueCharts dot com forward slash chart. I actually use that. I mean, you can see he was on my uh, my main trading PC today because uh, he's at the Bat Cave. It's kind of weird. Like uh, I grew up in the hills of Eastern Kentucky in uh, a lower uh, middle to lower income uh, bracket as I was growing up in a very rural part of Eastern Kentucky and. I always, when I was a kid, I watched a lot of Scooby Doo and Ghost of Mr. Chick, and I was like, man, if I ever make enough money, I'm going to build a real big house, and I'm going to have like secret passageways and hidden doors and stuff, and it's kind of cool. Like I actually have that in my house um, now. So like Mark and his guys come down here, and we kind of uh, talk business and talk talk trading and stuff a lot. So it's really fun to have folks that we call it the Bat Cave um, because it's got a a book a, a hidden bookcase door that opens up into a little 1,500-square-foot uh, office that's, you know, wall-to-wall -wall whiteboards painted on the walls and stuff like that. And I know Morgan's been down here a couple times, too, so I love having, you know, other people in the industry here. So, all right, so let's get started. So uh, you should be able to see my live charts. Do you see my charts? And you should be able to hear my voice. Um, looks like I'm on tap for an hour and 10 minutes. So I'm going to show you uh, some bond trading. Um, if you ever traded the, the, the stock market or the options or – or index futures, you, you you may be getting a little bit chopped up. So I'm going to walk through an example of maybe shifting you. So keep your mind a little bit open. Maybe shifting you out of a market that you're potentially losing money in and try to trade something that's a little bit slower, a little bit more methodical, but also could you know make you more money in the long run. So right now you probably see a chart up of my screen. You can see I'm in two positions this morning. Uh, this this is the trade I'm going to teach you today. Where on this trade I'm up three hundred and forty three dollars before we got started here. I was up seven hundred and fifty. This is on a one contract, so it's not a big deal. Uh, not a lot of risk, and you can see I've risked one fifty six, and I'm trying to go for a thousand dollar profits up here. So that's what we're looking for there. And then uh, the second trade that I'm in, I'm in coffee, and I'll show you like uh, something else that you should be in to on coffee. And on coffee this morning, we've been up as high as eh, $3,500 on coffee on a one lot. So that's not too bad. And didn't take much risk on the coffee. Go ahead and lock that in, and we'll bump up our, our initial stop. We'll lock in 300 bucks on that trade and lock that in. Um, so I'm going to get started here. First, before I say anything that comes out of my, my mouth, I am registered. I'm a Series 3 and a Series 30. I have my own futures IB, which means I can clear my trades. I can also clear yours if I wanted to. Heads up, I don't want to. Um, uh, warning, uh, trading can be hazardous to most all of your money trying to figure out how to trade. So be careful when you do it. It's very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing, and it's very dangerous if you do know what you're doing. So um, some of the examples I'm going to show you are going to be hypothetical and simulated, and some of them are actually going to be real that I actually do. Um, let's see here. Okay, I'll make sure. So if you if you understand that you should never trade with more money than you can afford to lose, you'll be good to go. So I don't think I would do very well with an orange suit in a federal penitentiary with a roommate named Bubba. So I always like to go above and, above and beyond the call and say, look, trading may end up for you badly, and the odds are totally against you. So you're, it's probably going to end up like a, a bad country song. Your wife's going to leave you. Your kids are going to hate you. They're going to uh, take your hat, foreclose on your house and repossess your vehicle. So just give me a visual yes that everybody understands how dangerous what we do is actually. I mean, I, I take it very serious. Like we are trading real money. We all trade for a living. We try to make more money than we lose. I take the business very serious, and I take the trades very serious. I just don't take myself very serious because, you know, life is short, and, heck, if you're not having fun, what's the point? So now that I've scared the bejesus out of you, and you're, you're probably screaming like this little fellow here going, oh, my God, what is this this hillbilly from Kentucky talking about? I thought he was going to teach us how to make money, not lose money. I just want to be real with you. I don't want to blow smoke up your ear and tell you, like, kumbaya, it's all, it's all going to be sunshine and raisins, right? So... My name is Hubert Sinners. This is my no BS approach to trading and investing. So let's have some fun here. So now that I've scared you a little bit, I want to tell you what my personal uh, my personal belief system is. I believe if you get around other um, driven and successful and wealthy and ambitious people, 
some of that will rub off on you. I just believe that. That's one of my core beliefs in life. I believe that the harder you work, the luckier you get. I don't really believe in luck much. I think we all get about the same amount of luck, and it really depends on if you're willing to strike when the iron's hot. So usually the harder that I, I guess you could call me a workaholic. I don't really see it as work. I mean, I, I do what I love, and I, I love what I do. I trade a lot, and I and I have a lot of other very diverse business interests. So um, I really like it. Some of the best ways, in my opinion, to build wealth are uh, trading or investing, businesses, and or real estate. Those are some really really top notch things in order to in order to um, invest your money in and spend your time on for a really, really good return. Some of these guys on the, the, the collage of the photos are, are close personal friends of mine. Some of them are just business associates, and some of them I advise them uh, on what to do with either their money or their business. So um, I'm actually, I'm going to use my teleprompter here. i got to grab it really quick because sometimes it's, it's not working all the time. So um, in the upper right-hand corner, you can see uh, a picture of me and my big catfish head there. And I actually, both Mark and myself have been on this PC, which is usually uh, six 24-inch LCDs, and we've been talking on this microphone here. Neither one of us are dressed like this. We're dressed like normal humans in jeans and, and, and shirts and, and regular shoes. So congratulations. You're in the right place at the right time. So what I want to do next is I want to do a little bit of an example of math. We're going to do a little a math example. So let's do some math, and it'll be simple math. Now, this is asterisk. This, we're going to pretend that this trade works only four times out of ten. Okay, so that's going to be a 40% win-loss ratio. So if I was going to tell you that I've got a trade setup that I want to show you that only works 40% of the time, would you be willing to listen to it and, and or take it? So when someone asks you that some smart or intelligent questions would be depends what's the risk what's the reward what's the profitability what's the profit factor of that so let's walk through this so I'm pretty much known for am good bad or indifferent right and then also I'm known for taking very small risks for larger gains that's just because I'm, I'm a risk averse type guy like I don't take a lot of huge amount of risks I will lose a lot of money on a lot of little itty bitty trades in order to gain it back on two or three real large trades. So let's go through this and let's say we had 10 trades, a sequence of 10 trades, all right? And the first six trades are going to be uh, a loss and it's going to be a loss of $156. So we're going to lose $936, which that's terrible. And then the next four trades, we're going to have four winners and we're going to hold them for $1,000 in profit. So we're going to make $4,000. So we're going to be 4000 in the profit minus 936. And then magically, we're going to come out with a profit after we get out of all these trades of $3,064. So not too bad, right? So if you look at that, now if I tell you like, hey, I've got a trade that works about 40% of the time, would you be willing to go for that trade? Really, I mean, if I could show you a trade that works only 40% of the time, and it would net you, on average, $3,000, would you take it? Now, what a lot of people fall into is this. They want to know what the percentage factor of the trade is. Like, I can teach you a trade that works 98% of the time. You're not going to like the trade, though. It works 98% of the time where, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go long the S&P with no stop, which is crazy, and we're going to use a one-tick target, all right? Now, that trade's going to work out 98% of the time. It's that one time or that two times that it doesn't work, and it's just going to absolutely rip your head off, right? But it works 98% of the time, so we should all be wanting to take that, right? So when you're, when you're designing out your trading plan and your trading system, design it out for real life. Don't design it out for like, well, this trade works 89.2% of the time. Nothing works that much. Do you really think? Do you really think that none of us have ever tried to figure out how to make trades more profitable or be more correct than we are wrong? Most professional traders that I know, most professional traders that I know, are right 50% of the time or less. Okay, now that may scare you, but the reason it shouldn't scare you is, is even though a lot of us are wrong more than we're right, we usually make more money because what we're doing is we're taking very amounts, very small amounts of risk. For large amounts of gain. All right, so let's say let's say it's worse. Let's say that this trade only works three times out of ten. 
Would you take it if it works out three times out of ten? So before we go any further, let's talk about the risk to reward factor of this trade. Let's say that on this risk to reward factor, let's say we're going to have ten trades, okay, and we know we're going to risk a hundred dollars to potentially make a thousand dollars. What's the risk to reward ratio? Does this trade? So if if we had nine losses and one winner, would that work? Would you be willing to take that trade? I mean, you'd come out basically at break even, right? Well, what if you had what if you had eight losses and only two winners? Would you do that trade? I I probably would, right? Now let's say if you have seven losers and only three winners, would you do that? Most definitely, I would do that. If you had six winners and four or six losers and four losses, or I should say six losses and four winners, would you do it? Definitely. So anything above two, you know, is really going to be pretty much gravy for the trade. So if you're doing seven losing trades times 156, because that's going to be the loss, you're going to lose $1,000. You're going to like, man, that's terrible. Why would you want to do that? Well, because on the other side, if you get three decent winners at $1,000 $1, a pop, then it's going to be 3000 minus 1092, which is going to come out to be about 1908. So not too bad, right? Now, this trade on average will happen anywhere from three to five times a week. That's on average, sometimes much, much more, sometimes much, much less, okay? So let's, let's dig into that. So there's, there's five stages or five levels that every trader goes through. Number one, you've, you've probably been to stage one where you learn how to lose massive amounts of money. Anybody been through stage one? It's terrible, it sucks, and you want to get through stage one as quick as you possibly can. So stage one is where you learn how to effectively burn through cash, and you get really, really good at it, right? You're like, oh my God, this is terrible. Please make it stop. And then you get to, to level or stage two where you learn how to lose little bits of money and you get pretty effective at that. You're like, well, that losing a lot of money all at once kind of sucks. Let's slow the burn rate down. And then where a lot of people get stuck here is at this square, which is level three. And I'm going to talk about several different ways where I'm going to try to get you to go from a level three trader to a level four trader. All right. And a level three trader is where you, you tread water. You make a lot of money, and you give it all back. Or you make a little bit of money, and you give it all back. Or you make a lot of money, and then you give a lot of it back in pieces. Right? Or you make, or, or you make a loss, or you make a, a loss, and then you just dig yourself out of the hole with little itty-bitty wins. So there's several different things that you can do. Number one, always make sure that you use a stop loss. Number two, make sure that you have a good risk-to-reward ratio. You want to hold your winners longer than you hold your losers. Has anybody ever suffered from uh, premature profit taking? Anybody ever suffer from premature profit taking? As soon as you get up two or three hundred bucks, you just immediately take it because you gotta take the you gotta take some you gotta ring the cash register because you've had all these massive losses. So your your mental uh, residue of all your trades are like, oh my God, I suck at this. I, I better take the profit because if I don't do it, I'm gonna lose money, right? So Ask yourself this question. If you had a series of like six trades, has anybody ever done this where you've had one, two, three, four, five trades, and then six trades? So we're going to call number six the winner, and we're going to call number trades one through five the loser. And you're getting ready to close up shop for the day, and then all of a sudden you're like, all right, I'm, I, I got to close out all these trades, or I got to close out some of these. What am I going to do? Well, uh, I know what I'm, I know what I'm going to do. This is a great idea. I'm going to, well, this one's up some money. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to I'm going to get out of this one and then I'm going to hold on to these these five losers. They'll eventually make me some cash. Anybody ever done that? I know you have because I've done it a lot when I first started trading out. Now I've been trading 22 plus years. It it's it's crazy. It's asinine to do this. It, you think it makes total logical sense. Trading is very counterintuitive. The correct thing to do is cut all these little losers loose and let this thing that's making you money build you up some more cash. That's the best way to do it. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, there's three main styles that traders kind of gravitate towards. Now, the number one style is they'll have a big loss, and then as soon as they have a big loss, then they'll have these little gains, and they'll jump out of the profits just a little bit too quick, and then they have another big loss. So that's style A. You want to kind of stay away from that. Style C is kind of tough to do, too, because it's a death of a 1,000 cuts where you just have loss after loss after loss after loss after loss. And then you have a little bit of a gain, and then you take it really quickly, and then you have you know a series of big losses too. So try to stay away from uh, stage or uh, platform C. 
Now, how I try to personally trade myself is is like this right here is B, where I will have little loser, little loser, little loser, little loser, little loser, little loser, little loser. And I got lots of little losers. I no joke. I got more than most probably. Little loser, little loser, boom, big old gain. And then a bunch of another series of little losers. So this is how I personally try to trade every single day of the week, of the month, and of the year. Boom. So that's how I try to trade. Now, some days it works out wonderful. Some days I can't trade my way out of a wet paper bag. So don't don't think that all of us professional traders are right all the time because we're not. We're wrong usually more than 50%. And if we're right more than 50%, we're usually making really, really good money. So I'm going to tell you one more story, and then we're going to get right into the meat of the presentation. So this is called Aesop's Fable. And in case you don't know what this is, this is a scorpion. And this is a frog, okay? So um, there's a, a scorpion and a frog on a deserted island. There's nothing to eat. And the scorpion comes to the frog and says, hey, frog, to the other side of this stream here to better hunting grounds, okay? So uh, the frog goes, you've lost your mind. We're mortal enemies. You will kill me and eat me. Stay away from me. For whatever reason, the, fall, the frog eventually lets the scorpion talk him into it, and the, and the scorpion goes, no, no, I just need a ride to the other side. There's nothing else here to eat. If I eat you, I'm going to starve to death. And so the frog goes, okay, I guess you got a point. Scorpion jumps on the frog's back, and as they're heading over to this other piece of land here, about halfway across the water here, the scorpion stings the frog in the back, and the frog goes, why? Why would you do that? As they both sink to their death, the scorpion goes, eh, I don't know. It's in my nature. So if you're trading something that goes like this, Run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse. And you're trying to trade breakout strategies on that? Well, heads up, you're, you're letting a scorpion on your back. I'm not saying you're getting what you deserve. I'm saying that this is the nature of that market to be run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse. Stop trading it in a breakout fashion. That won't work. This is really good for counter trend traders. If you're a trend trader and you like to buy breakouts or pullbacks, Trade something that goes like this on a consistent basis or trade something that goes like this on a consistent basis. It'll make your life a lot easier. Now, there's there's a distinct personality that, among different markets, okay? So in this case over here, this would be like the E-minis. And we call these sprinters. And then over here we call these marathon runners. So you can call this sprinters, marathon runners. The reason it's called sprinters is because it goes run, stop, come after you, stop you out, and reverse. Run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse. So what's the best market for you to trade? So really quickly, if you don't mind, because I don't know the entire audience in here, what do you trade? Do you trade stocks? Do you trade futures? Do you trade options, forex, gold, bonds? I don't know what you trade, so just tell me really quickly. Uh, I trade everything. If it moves, I trade it. Um, so most people start out with stocks and options, and they move to futures and forex, and then and, and then they kind of branch out is usually the way most people uh, approach the market. So so when you started trading out, you obviously did a lot of research, right? You're like, oh, definitely the place to go would be the Australian dollar versus the uh, the uh, British pound cross. That's the best market to trade, right? Like everybody did all that research, right? You know you didn't. What you did is you probably just asked all your friends and relatives or your broker. Your broker goes, oh, you want to trade? Here. You know what you should trade? Oh, you should trade stocks because I'm a stockbroker. Oh, you should trade options because that's what I that's what I trade. Or you should trade S and P futures. So for this example, we'll keep it to the S and P futures because a lot of people trade the S and P mini futures or they trade stocks or options. So you get a piece of them advice and they go, "Well, I'll trade these things because they're real nice and thick." And then what happens is you end up you end up trading these things. Well, hold on here, I have messed my slide up here. You end up trading these things. I'm going in reverse. It's like a flashback, back, back, back to the futures. Um, you end up trading them, and you end up getting, uh, um, there we go. All right. You get chopped up. Let me find my slide. You get. You end up trading them, and everybody talks you into them, and you go, okay, I'll try them, right? So then once you try them, then what happens is you end up getting chopped up. What is wrong with my slides? Sorry, guys. There you go. You end up trading them, you get chopped up, and then you start asking yourself real quality questions, right? So you start going, what's going to do this? Everybody else must be doing it because there's a ton of volume going in the market. Are we all just losing money? No, that's impossible, right? 
So then you start telling yourself, you start asking your question, like, why can't I do this? I'm smart. I'm successful. Successful. Uh, I'm driven. I'm working hard at this. Um, why can't I do this? It's just too daggone hard. And then you'll start coming to the conclusion that, well, this thing must be rigged, right? Let me remove this horizontal line, and this will get it off of this alert system, so it'll quit driving us crazy. There you go. Sorry about that. Trade alert's going off like crazy. So then you'll start saying, yeah, this is rigged, right? So it's not rigged. It's just you're probably trading. You've been betrayed, and, and certain people in the market have actually lied to you, and you're sitting there going, okay, who lied to me? Well, they didn't lie to you on purpose. It's just it gets passed down from generation to generation, and they are, you know, other traders, the media, CNBC, um, you know, Bloomberg and stuff like that. Investors, it gets passed down from generation to generation. Did you test it? So what we're going to talk about for the rest of the presentation is how to pick the best market for you to actually trade, okay? So uh, did, you, did you believe what they told you? Or did you trust them and then verify? So I'll trust just about anybody, but I will always verify what they tell me. So true or false, if you can trade, should you be able to trade any market? Okay. True or false, if you can trade, you can trade any market. Do you believe that to be true or false? True or false. So let's just see what a, the blanket on it says. True, yes, false, true, false, false, true, 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 true. true. Looks like I've got a little bit more trues than falses. All right. So I would say that for the most part, I would say that's true. If you're a trader's trader and you just like to trade in general, I would say that's true, but, right, and it's kind of like when your girlfriend broke up with you in high school, like, it's not me, it's you, or it's not me, it's it's not you, it's me, right? Always when somebody says but, you know the other shoe's about to drop. So it's a lot easier to trade something that's going to match your trading style and your personality. If you don't, What's going to happen if you don't match your trading style and your trading personality to the right market? It's going to be very painful and very frustrating. So trading the wrong market or the wrong style for you is like hitting yourself in the head with a hammer. It's going to feel great once you stop. So what we're going to talk about is as soon as you answer the next little survey, think about this statement. What's wrong with trading better quicker? If you could trade something that matched up really well with your personal trading style and your trading personality, do you think you would trade better quicker? Do you think you would trade better quicker if, and I know you've had this happen before, you've been in a trade or you've been in the zone where you're like, man, that was just really easy to do, right? And you've probably traded a market or two and go, man, just today I am on fire, right? You probably also had the opposite happen where like, Man, I cannot trade my way out of a paper bag today. Like, if I would just do the opposite of everything that I did today, I would be up 20 grand, right? So, what I'm going to talk about today is like how to pick the best market for you to trade, right? And the first thing that you want to start off with, in my opinion, would be an average true range. Average true range, which means, all right, how thick or how wide is the range of something that you're going to trade? And the best analogy that I can think of is, of this is, let's say that you're you're an aspiring pilot and you're taking some pilot lessons and you've you've had three pilot lessons and you know the old guy sitting to you on the right is going all right here's how you do this here's how you do that so and there's all of a sudden your co-pilot which is teaching you how to fly and this is your third lesson uh, he dies of a massive heart attack okay I know nice little analogy right and then what's going to happen is there's two different airstrips that you're going to have to the tower is going to try to talk you down on there's airstrip A, which you've just had three lessons, and then there's airstrip B, which is longer and wider. Okay, So which one would you rather try to attempt to land on, airstrip A or airstrip B after having three entire pilot's lessons? So for me, I would definitely want to try to land on B, right? You have a way bigger margin of error. You may actually walk away alive. Where if it's A, I know I'm smoked and I'm going to get killed. So, uh, and flying and trading actually have a lot of really good analogies. So, if you think about flying, takeoff is optional, but landing is mandatory, right? Like, if you take off, it's it's a decision. Like, all right, let's take off. All right, we got to land, though. Same thing with trading. Like, if you, you know, it's 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 optional to take a trade, but it's mandatory that you exit it at some point, right? You're not going to stay in it forever. So they have some really good analogies. So an average true range 
It just stands for ATR, average true range. And what it means is from this low point to this high point during the day, that's the range that your thing, whatever you're trading, whether it's a stock, an options, a futures, a forex, a bond, a gold, that's what that thing's going to be. All right. So, and all you have to do is just use an average true range indicator. And for this example, we're going to be using a daily chart for all of these. Using a 14 period, which just means it's going to look back 14 bars. So, if we're looking at a daily chart, we know we're going to be looking back 14 days. All right. If we were looking at a five minute chart, it would be looking back five bars. A five minute bar would be looking back 14 bars, and it'd give you the range for those 14 bars. So the Dow moves about 93 points a day. The multiplier is how much a point is worth. So it's $5. And you're going to make or lose $465 a day. Now, does anybody in here believe that you're going to be able to get all 93 points out of the Dow every day? You know you're not going to be able to. What do you think you're probably going to be able to get? What would be a decent? I mean, if, if, you, got, if you could get half of this range, would you be happy? Yes. If, heck, if you could get three quarters of this range, you'd be super, super wealthy, right? So, I mean, if you can get half the range of these stated values, you're doing really good, okay? So um, so let's talk about the S&P. So the S&P, uh, $10 on the range, $50, uh, $50 multiplier, and then you can see that you're going to make or lose $515 a day. NASDAQ, $25 times 20 bucks, you're going to make or lose $518. And then the Russell, nine points, almost 10 points, times $100. So you're going to make or lose $990. Now, the bad thing about these index futures, and I'm a huge index fan. I've traded them for years. If you're a new trader or if you're an inexperienced trader, these things are kind of hard to trade because this is their personality. So number one, we know what the range is. This is our range. This is our multiplier. And this is how much money we're either going to make or lose, okay? The problem is this may not fit your personality. You may go and like, man, the Russell looks amazing. $990 a day. I got this. I got this. The only problem with these things is they're sprinters. They go like this. Run, stop, reverse. Run, stop, reverse. Run, stop, reverse. Run, stop, reverse. Heads up, breaking out. Psych. Gotcha, sucker. Run, stop, reverse. Run, stop, reverse. Run, stop, reverse. Has anybody ever experienced these? Anybody ever experienced the chop factor in the E-minis? whether it be Dow, S&P, NASDAQ, or Russell. Now, they're really good if you're a counter-trend trader and you like trading the turns. If you're not, then you want to stay away from these four things if that's not your personality. Now, let's move down here to the bond market, okay? Bond in, in particular. Now, there's different bonds. There's bonds and there's notes. There's the 30-year bond. There's the 10-year note. There's the 5-year note. There's the 2-year note. The bonds are going to move a little bit over a point a day. It's going to be worth $1,000. And you're going to make or lose $1,150 a day. The cool thing about bonds is they're very slow. They're very methodical. Unless there's an FOMC or an interest rate increase or decrease, then bonds are very cool, calm, and collected. This is how the bond market works. It goes up, and then it retraces. And then it goes up, and then it retraces. And then it goes up, and then it retraces. And then it goes up, and then it'll retrace about half. So which one's easier to trade, A or B? In my opinion, B is a lot easier. Now, if you now you're sitting there going, well, that's pretty cool, but I don't know how to trade those. I'll teach you how to trade those in just a second. Now, let's say crude oil, and crude oil is just a crazy trading market. Almost a two-point range times a thousand dollars. Oh, now we're talking eighteen hundred dollars a day. Sign me up for that. Only problem is crude oil is bipolar. It is like that crazy ex-girlfriend or crazy ex-boyfriend that you had, or if you were married and divorced, it's like your crazy ex-husband or crazy ex-wife. Crude oil is bipolar. It is crazy. It will, it's got both personalities. It's, it'll go run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse, break out, break out, back down, run, stop, reverse, go back the other way. It's just really chaotic sometimes, crude oils. So you have to be careful when you're trading crude oil because it has a bipolar personality. And as long as you know that and go, okay, I can't hold on to crude long unless it's just a really, really in a great mood. I'm going to have to grab it and then let it pop and then just get out of it, okay? Silver also is a, is a good trading market, but it's a big multiplier, and it, it, trades, it trades something like gold, but the multiplier makes it more poppy. So it's, we call it the, the widow maker if you're not on the right side of it, like kind of like natural gas. And silver is a good trading market. It's just hard to trade. So stay away from 
crude and stay away from silver unless you really, really know what you're doing at first, okay? Now, gold is a good trading market. It's got about an 18-point range, $100 a multiple. You're going to make or lose $1,800 in a day. Here's how gold trades. Gold goes explosive move, consolidation, explosive move, consolidation, explosive move, consolidation, and then it'll retrace. So you can obviously see A trades like this, B trades like this, and C trades like this. So if you're a trend trader that either likes to buy breakouts or pullbacks, which one's going to be more conducive to the way that you trade? Which one's going to dovetail really, really good for you? A, B, or C. And yeah, and coffee. Coffee is a really poppy market too, yeah. Yeah, like coffee, I'm up, I'm up a pretty good crack on coffee today. So A, if you're a counter trend trader, it's going to be easier. If you're a trend trader and you want to buy pullbacks, B is going to look good. If you're a trend trader that wants to buy breakouts, C, C looks good, right? So that's how you figure out how to trade a different market and kind of match the market to your personality. So now FX has both, Steve. Good question. FX depends on what stage that FX is, what 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 cross that you're trading, what pair, and if you're trading FX or if you're trading currency futures. It depends on the trend of that particular market. Those Each one of those have their own uh, personality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you talk to you today and I'm going to try to talk you into I'm trying I'm going to try to sell you on the benefits of trading bonds now the sales not for me the sales for you I already know how to trade bonds hopefully I will teach you a little bit about the bond market that will help actually help you make money so the bond market is is anybody in here own a, own a house or own a mortgage does anybody in here think that interest rates are going to stay down here or do you think they will probably rise in the future they're probably going to rise in the future now it may not be tomorrow it may not be next month it may not be next year but it's going to eventually rise right you can't have interest rates here forever it's just impossible to do and never you never want to say never in the markets but interest rates this low just historically just don't stay down here for forever so it'll eventually go up so when we're talking about the 30-year bond, that's what we're trading. We're trading the inverse to that. So when the bond yield, so if the bond yield goes, home goes down, then the 30-year bond will probably go lower. And bonds right now are in a weird spot, and I'll, I'll show you where they're at, and I'll show you a really easy and effective way to trade those. So, um, and I'm not talking about like CDs that your grandma and grandpa used to trade, and they're, they're like, well, I have a, a six-year CD or a, a 10-year CD. I'm not talking about this. All this is is it's just a futures contract. If you can trade stocks, you can trade futures. If you can trade options, you most definitely can trade futures. So we're going to talk about on the rest of the presentation on how to hold a winner longer. So I'm going to cover bond basics. Who in here has never traded a future before? And who in here has never traded a bond before? Just give me a show of hands. Because I've got 38 minutes, and what I'm going to do for the rest of the time is I'm going to give you like a like a bond, like a future slash bond crash course, okay, to get everybody up to snuff. So if you know how to trade futures, some of this may be, uh, you know, overlap. If you've never traded bonds, then it'll be some good information. So, all right, so let's go over the bond basics. So I've got 37 more minutes, and I'll give you a bond crash course, all right? So we're going to talk about the months, the time, the cautionary period. We're going to talk about the symbols. We're going to talk about tick values. We're going to talk about dome, and we're going to talk about margins, and then I'm going to teach you a couple of really cool trades that you can do in the bond markets. Now, before you get started, uh, yeah, this is all being recorded. Futures can be a little bit confusing because some nut job named them with weird letters. That's the hardest thing about these things, all right? If you can just wrap your head around this, you can wrap your head around just about anything. So January month equals F. I have no idea why. Obviously, Jan uh, February is G because someone thinks that there should be a G in February. H, none of this makes sense. Don't pay attention to it. All you need to do is ask your broker what month you should be trading is really all you need to know. So in the futures market, in the uh, anybody in here trade the E-minis, Dow, S&P, NASDAQ, or Russell? So it trades at H-M-U-Z, and the acronym for that is Hey Man, You Zipped. And all this means is... March is H, June is M, U is September, and Z is December. Please don't let this freak you out. It is really not that important. All, all that it means is like this. Let's say that, um, all right, so the first thing is you want to know what the symbol is. 
then you want to know what the month is, and then you want to know what the year is. This just tells us what physically we are trading. So if you were going to trade Google, you'd say G-O-O-G, -O -O -G, right? And that's all you'd have to worry about. If you're going to trade the Dow, S&P, the NASDAQ, or the Russell, or the 30-year bond future, you got to know what the symbol is. Now, it can be usually one of two different things. It'll either be U.S. or it'll be Z.B. And it depends on what brokerage firm you use. This is the same exact thing as the 30-year. This is the 30-year. This is the 30-year. They just sometimes use different letters to uh, in their platform. So how it works is the U.S. would be U.S. That's the symbol. And then the month would be U.S. And then it would be H. And then it'll either be 14 or it'll be 4, depending on how your futures broker does it. So this would equal this right here. It would be U.S. H 14, which just means there's your symbol. The month is H, which means March, and the year is 2014. So here's how complicated that futures get, and it's this is about as complicated that I'll get on this slide. So we're going to say that we had U.S. Z. It's supposed to be a Z. I promise that's supposed to be a Z. 13. Now, in the second week in December, on the Tuesday of the second week, we stop trading the USZ13, and we start trading March, which is USH14. Now, in the second week in March, on that Tuesday, we stop trading that, and then we start trading June, which is going to be USM14. Uh, in the second week, on that Tuesday, we stop trading June, and then we all start trading September. So what month should we be trading right now? What month should we be trading? So we're obviously we're past March, right? Are we past the second week in March? Okay. Have are we past so we're either trading so we must be trading June, right? Cuz we're not past the second week in June. So basically this contract is going to last a maximum of 3 months. Now the cool thing about this is we can go long June and if we wanted to we could go short September. Or if we wanted to hold it a, long, a little bit longer than three months, we could go long September also if you want to hold it for a longer time. Now, the cool thing about it is if you trade stocks or options, what's your biggest risk that you have? What's your biggest fear at night when you go to bed? What is it? It's a gap up or a gap down, isn't it? It's that gap risk. You're like, please, dear God, don't gap up or down on me. And if you do gap up, go in the, go in the direction that I need you to go, not the opposite direction. So if you have a stock account or an option account, you should have at least one small futures account so that you can hedge a lot of that risk because futures trade 23 hours a day and you don't really have that 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 overnight risk because they, they trade pretty much 24 hours a day, 23 hours a day, 24 hours a day. All right, so that, that's the months that you need to know about the bonds. Uh, like I said, there, there's several different symbols. You don't need to know that slide. They open up at 6 p.m. They close at 5 p.m. East Coast time, so the bond market here is open 23 hours a day. Open outcries when the pit opens up at 8.20 and closes at 3 o'clock. That's the open and closing time of the pit. Um, no, no decay on bond futures right or, or, or overnight. No, there's no decay. It's either it's, it's always you're trading exactly the bid and ask. The futures don't decay over time. Nope. Now, you might have the front month trade at a discount or at a premium of the current month, but there's no decay. All right. So this is a cheat sheet that I use. So I trade every market out there. So I really, so if you if if trading different contracts freak you out, just make yourself a cheat sheet like I do. I'm dyslexic, and there's no way that I can keep this all in my head. So I just make a cheat sheet. So like, this is the 30 year. This is the 10 year note. This is the five. This is the two. This is how they trade. This is the volume that's trading them. You can see they're really thick. You can see the 10 year has more volume than the 30, but I prefer to trade the 30 just because. So you know. That's why I do that. The, the, the 30 and the 10-year do move really similar, but I like the bigger tick in the 30 because I can make her lose more money. So they open up at 6 p.m. They close at 5. It's, it's about $1,000 a point when these things move, and it moves in 0 .0313 minimum move increments. A, a wiggle, a wiggle one time up or one time down, a minimum tick move, is going to make me $31.25. Okay, So that's how much a tick is worth. More leverage equal more risk. Yep, but I'm 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 used to that, so it doesn't scare me as much. So cautionary times that you need to be aware of: interest rates and any other market economic news. I use a service called Econo Day. It's free. 
E C O N O D A Y. And if there is a red star or an orange star, and if I don't have at least a point of cushion in my favor, then I will exit my trade right before that economic news release. All right, so tick values. One tick in the 30-year bond is going to make or lose you $31.25. This is how a tick works in the 30-year bond. It will go like 145 and 1 30 second. And then it will go 145 and 2 30 seconds. So when you go from here to here, you will have made $31.25. Now if it goes from 145 to 3 30 seconds, and if you were long at 145, that would be two ticks. So you'd multiply that times two, and that would be 62.50. Okay, super super easy to do. You don't have to know how to do fractions, I promise you. All right, one point is a thousand dollars. That's correct. So TradeStation does them like this, and this is an older slide, but you can see USH13, USM13, USU13. Infinity, which is another brokerage I use, goes ZBH13. These are the same thing. Whatever brokerage firm that you're using, just ask them what the 30-year bond is. All right, now we're going to do one more slide, and we're, then we're going to uh, get right into the meat of the presentation. There are actually three more, and then we're getting to the rules of the setup. Tosh uses uh, ZB, I believe, yeah. All right, this is the most important slide in the presentation, all right? The reason it's so important is because it teaches you how to trade these things. So this is what it looks like on Dome on a 30-year bond. We're going to pretend that you got long at 135 at this plus symbol. Is there basically 135? We're going to pretend that you're getting long at 135. If it goes from 135 to 135 and 130 seconds, how much money did you make? If it goes from 135 to 135 and 130 seconds, that's the minimum this thing can move is one tick is 130 second. How much money did you make? That's right. Now, if it goes from 135 to 135 and 230 seconds, how many ticks is that? And how much money did you make? Two, it's two ticks, and you will make sixty-two fifty, right? Now, remember, I said earlier that the bonds move about one point one five points, so you know it's going to move more than a point a day. So, how many ticks are in a full point? If you go from one thirty-five all the way up here to one thirty-six, how many ticks is that? And all you have to do is count. And if you can't count, cheat. Go 1, 2, 3, 4, see all these numbers, and it goes 28, 30 seconds, 29, 30 seconds, 30, 30 seconds, 31. Oh, well, that must be 32, 30 seconds. So one full point equals 32, 30 seconds, and, and don't sweat the fractions. I got Ds in math in high school, okay? And I said D like dog, not B as in boy. So you can see that the risk to reward is there that we can do this, right? So if you look at this situation, um, you've got a decent opportunity to make some money in the bond market. So does anybody have any questions on this slide, how bonds work? I want to make sure that you don't have any, because if you do, I'll do the explanation one more time. Because if I lose you on this slide, when I do the uh, the example of the trade setup, I'll, I'll, I'll lose you. Does anybody want me to cover this slide one more time? <laughs> you make it so simple. That's funny. Uh, all right, please repeat. All right, so we're going to pretend that you're long at 135 right down here. And the bond market went from 135 to 135 and 130 second, which is a minimum move that it will make. It's a minimum tick. So think about it like a stock going up a penny. This is this going from 135. It can only go to 135, 130 second, or it can go to 134 and 31, 30 seconds. That one tick is going to make or lose us $31.25. Now, if we go up two ticks, that would be from 135 to 135 and 230 seconds, and we would make $62.50 because it would be 2 times $31.25. All right. If we go from 135 all the way up here to 136, which is very easily done in the bond market, there is no cap in bonds. Uh, oh, do bonds gap? Not usually. Well, they're closed. They're only closed for an hour. They close from 5 o'clock and they reopen at 6. So, yeah, they could gap, but if they do, it's a very small, really small gap because they're only closed for. 45 minutes to 60 minutes. So a point is from 135 to 136, which is 32, 30 seconds, and these things use pretty good. They don't have limit moves, no. All right, so this is how different brokerage firms will uh, will 
present this information to you. So this is 130, 131 and 31 30 seconds. There's 132. Here's 132 and 130 seconds. So they'll they'll display the information to you in fractions. 130 second, 230 second, 330 second. Makes sense, right? My other brokerage is Affinity, and they display it in decimals, which is 133.12, which means 12, 30 seconds. 133, 13, 30 seconds. 133 and 14, 30 seconds. It's the same thing, though, okay? One just does it in decimals, and one does it in fractions. All right. Last thing you need to know is the margin and the intraday rules and the overnight rules. Now, this trade that I'm about to teach you works in both the overnight and the intraday intraday setups. It, it's good for swing traders that want to hold it for longer than eight hours or longer than 24 hours or longer than three days. It's also really good for intraday traders. So call your broker. You can usually have anywhere from $300 to $500 intraday margin. Uh, just be careful on the leverage. And then the overnight margin on a 30-year bond is going to run you about three grand. Okay. On the 10-year, it's a little less on the 10-year note. You, you can usually get it for about fourteen fifteen hundred dollars for the five year it's seven hundred and forty three for the two year it's three oh four now I'm basically going to be teaching you the thirty year because it's the big bad boy and it's the biggest tick and if you can handle that and you can trade all these little smaller ones really really easy so if you were to go long at nine thirty a m and you liquidated your trade at four thirty is that intraday or overnight margin Re this is very important why we're going over this don't think this is the simple part this is important because you should you should get an aha from this in just a second. All right, so that's intraday margin. So that's a day trade. All right, now if you enter a trade at 9.30 a.m. and you hold on to that trade till, uh, let's say, 7 o'clock p.m., is that, is that an intraday trade or is that an overnight trade? It's after hours, right? That's, that's an overnight trade. So you're going to pay more for that sucker, right, for the initial margin. Now, Let's say that you initiate a trade at 6.01 and you hold it to the next day until 4.59. Is that intraday or overnight? Intraday or overnight? This one at most brokerage firms will be intraday because, remember, the bonds close at 5 and they open back up at 6. Now, let's say that you do a trade at 6.01 p.m. and you hold it until, you know, 5.01. 1 p.m. Well, first, you won't be able to get out of it because they won't open up until 6, right? That's an overnight trade. Now, remember that the bonds are going to move a little bit over a point, 1.15 points. What you should say to yourself is, aha, there should be a little light bulb that's over your head right now going, oh, well, if I wait and enter these suckers at 6 p.m. in the evening, I can hold it for 23 hours, and I'm not going to have to pay this intraday margin. I'm only going to have to pay 3 to 500 days intraday margin, and I get to hold it for 23 hours. That's going to increase my odds of actually making my full point, right? So let's talk about this. So here are the rules for the trade setup, and all you have to do is make sure that you do all of these, all of those rules, and then you come out on the other side, and then make sure that you do these, and then magically you've got, you've got profits, all right? That's all you have to remember. So I really appreciate you guys having me, and I'll see you on the next webinar. I'm just messing with you totally. So here's how this works. Um, uh, it's a 8-tick reversal, a 12-tick reversal, and a 16-tick reversal. So start, so start taking notes right here. This is the important part. This is how bonds move. They're very methodical, very slow. They go up, and then they retrace 8 ticks, and then they continue up, and then they retrace 8 ticks, and then they go up. Okay. Now, there's three different moods that bonds will be in. It'll either be in an 8-tick mood, a 12-tick mood, or a 16-tick mood. It's kind of like your wife when you roll over in the morning. You can just tell if she's in a good mood or a bad mood, right? Or if you're married to a, a guy, it's your husband. Now, they'll go up, they'll retrace 12 ticks and continue. Or they'll go up and retrace 16 ticks, and then they'll continue. So here's my general rule of thumb. I hardly ever do the 12-tick just because... I just not I'm just not a good 12 tick trader. I'm I'm a better 8 tick trader and 16 tick trader. So here are my following rules to decide whether I'm going to do an 8 tick or a 12 tick. If the bonds have had a range of 16 ticks or less, then I will do an 8 tick reversal. If the bonds have had a 24 tick range or greater, I'll do a 16 tick trade. 
All right. So in other words, if the bonds open up and their net change is up, if the bonds are up 15 ticks, then what am I going to be looking for? Am I going to be looking for an 8-tick trade or a 16-tick trade? Right. I'm, I'm betting that once it tops out, it's going to pull back 8 ticks and then continue higher. Now, if the bonds are up 25 ticks on the day, all right, what am I going to be looking for? Am I going to be looking for an 8 here or am I going to be looking for a 16 here? I could do either. Just to be clear, just to clarify, I could do either, but I'll I'll wait for a 16 because I know I got a better chance of it working out for me. All right, all right. So that's the rules. Now let's let's do this trade for real, okay? I'm going to teach you a couple of examples, and the examples are cherry picked for theory. I got 20 more minutes, so I've got plenty of time to teach you this trade setup. Now remember, does anybody remember what I said the math was? This thing's either going to work four times out of ten. Or it's going to be working three times out of ten. Remember that? What is this called when you short something here and cover it here? If you short low and cover high, what's it called in the trading world? What do we call that? Anybody know? Nobody's ever lost money in here before? It's called, it's called a loss. Right? I lost $156 on the first trade. Now, I, like, I will lie to myself because if you don't lie to yourself in trading, you'll get your head ripped off. And what I do is I, I, try, to, I try to make the losses not hurt as bad as, when, as what I'm saying when I lie to myself. I'm like, well, that's a deposit into the market. So I'm, I'm depositing $156 into the market, and I'm looking to get that, that money back at an inflated interest rate. Does that make sense? And then I go, okay, that's the first one. Daggone it. Got me. And then look here. I short here again. And I cover here, so what's the second trade called? So there's strike one. Here's strike two, right? And I, I, I deposit another $156.25 to the market. At this point, I'm starting to rethink life, right? Because I'm sitting there going, man, I suck so bad. This is terrible. Oh, my God, I'm not going to be able to eat today, right? No, I know what the, I know what the numbers are for this trade. I know it's going to work three out, of, three out of seven or four out of six, or four out of six right? Or three out of ten or four out of ten, all right? So I go, okay, I've had two strikes on the intraday. That didn't work. I'm going to wait for the 6 p.m. open. I still have bonds pegged as going lower on my daily downtrend, so I want to stay short those. I'm going to ignore all the longs, right? And then I'm going to say, okay, the market opens up, and immediately the bond market goes higher. So I'm like, uh, okay, bonds, if you go higher, you go without me. I'm not, I'm not doing it because you're in a daily dag. You're dag on it. You're in a daily downtrend. They go lower, then they bounce up, and then on, I get short on that eight tick bounce. And then I've got a 32 tick target. On each one of these trades, I'm risking five ticks to make 32. That's where we're risking $156.25 to potentially make $1,000. Okay. Now, what's this called when you short something here and cover it here? What's it called? A lot of people call it luck. Right? It's just a profit is all it is. Now, look. So let's just do... It's right. This is called a withdrawal from the market. So we had a series of three trades. These are all three trades that are real. These, this is not cherry pick. This is just how I traded the account. Now I made a thousand dollars over here, but how much did I lose over here? One hundred and fifty-six. Let's just round it. One fifty times two, three hundred. Right. So minus three hundred. So I made about seven hundred dollars profit on those three trades. That's not too bad for a one lot trade. Now. If you think that it was just luck, look at how lucky we could have got. Oh, there's another eight tick. Oh, there's another eight tick. Oh, look at there. There's one that's close. I would have to calculate to see. It. Oh, look here. There's an eight tick reversal, but this one, bam, it would have got you because it would have stopped you out on your five tick entry, right? On your stop loss. So we had winner, 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 maybe. I don't even know if that one qualifies. And this one right here, loser. So not too bad string of trades, right? Now, the cool thing about this trade. The cool thing about this trade is, um, does anybody wonder why it works so well? Okay. Anybody want to know why it works so well? How many contracts do you trade? It depends. I will trade multiple lots. On these example, I'm just using a one lot to show how it works, but you can trade as many as you want. So one, one of the reasons that it works so well is, number one, take a look at the time. So I'm short from here. And then I covered here. What am I doing from this time to this time? I'm sleeping. 
I can't mess with the trade. So in other words, as soon as I'm up $300 on this trade, I can't wuss out and jump out too early. As soon as I'm up $700 on the trade here, I can't jump out because I want to ring the cash register. I have to wait until my target is hit. So now let's go over through the exact. So what, what I'm doing here is I'm actually taking the weakest, the weakest thing in the chain out of the trading strategy, which is me. It's me wanting to jump out too early, or it's me wanting to you know, not let the stop be hit. So in other words, I let the stop either get hit or I let the target be hit. Okay, drawdown is five ticks per trade, right? So let's go through this. So we're going to go through a, 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 an example. We've got 15 more minutes to teach the exact setup. So in this example, you can see the bonds are in a major uptrend. They broke this uptrend line right here, and then they sold off, consolidated, and sold off again. Notice the price is 145. Can we all agree that the bond market in this example is in a now a new major downtrend? Everybody agree? When I'm asleep, I don't trail a stop until I wake up the next day because I don't have a mechanism to trail a stop. So we're all going to agree that the bond market in this example is in a daily downtrend. So here's all the, here are the rules. Number one, you've got to find your daily daily trend, okay? T-R-E-N-D. Number two, if it's an uptrend, you want to go long. If it's a downtrend, you want to go short. You're all for me. I'm, I'm at step four. I'm either going to use an eight or a sixteen tick reversal, depending on the range, right? And then number five, I'm going to be using. I'm going to risk five ticks to make thirty-two ticks, and I I rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. So now that we've defined that we're in a, a daily downtrend in that example, right? The trend on the daily was in a downtrend. So what we're going to do is at 6 p.m., and you can do this intraday too, but for this example, we're doing the 6 p.m. trade. The market opens up at 6 p.m. It goes higher. Do I want to go long on that move to the high side? The answer is no, I don't, because I have my daily downtrend telling me that the pressure is to the downside. So I let the market sell off. It puts in a low. It bounces up eight ticks off of that low. I short it here, and I've got a 32-tick target. Notice how many times, like if you're a night owl, there's eight ticks, there's eight ticks. That one's questionable. This one, if you did it, you'd have got stopped out. Okay? Now, this is what it looks like in, in the zoomed in factor. All right, so this is the 6 p.m. open. Market opens up and it goes higher, and then it puts in this low. And the low is 146 and 4, 30 seconds. You see this right over here? So... The real question you should ask is, like, how do you know that's a low? I don't. What I do is I see this bouncing up, and I'm like, oh, low at 146 and 430 seconds. What is 4 plus 8? What's 4 plus 8? In most countries, it's what? Or, or you can go 8 plus 4. So it would be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12, right? Okay, cool. So then I want to short this when it gets to 146 and 12, 30 seconds. Does anybody remember what our stop loss is going to be? Our stop loss is five ticks. Twelve plus five is what? Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, right? Seventeen, right? So twelve plus five is seventeen, one forty-six, and seventeen, thirty seconds. What was our reward? If we're risking five, we want to make thirty-two. And an easy way to round this is just go, oh, it's going to drop one full point for us, 145 and uh, 4. Oh, hold on, wait a minute. It's right here, 146. 146, which will be 145 and 12, 30 seconds. So that's our entry. And then here it is, 145 and 12, 30 seconds. Does that make sense? Any questions on the trade setup? It's a pretty simple trade, right? So what happens is the next day I wake up and I can see I'm in the profit. And I go, okay, I've risked $156.25 on this trade setup. I'm going to go ahead and lock in $375. Because if I'm going to risk $156, I want to at least make $300. And then, you know, in the next few minutes, boom, automatically I make my $1,000 profit here. But I did when I woke back, when I woke up, I'm going to go ahead and lock in some, I'm going to trail my stop here. How much is commission and feed? Uh, the feed is going to depend on what your brokerage is. Uh, 
to for the ex, uh, cover expenses, I mean it's it, it's only going to be two dollars and fifty cents to put the trade on, and it's going to take two dollars and fifty cents to take the trade off. So a round turn for this trade is five dollars. So I really made nine hundred and ninety-five dollars, not an even thousand. Cost me five bucks to do the trade. That is how it works. Can we go long? Or can can we do a long put? Sure, you can do whatever you want. So let's take a look at a live chart here really quick. Uh, let me discard. So I'm going to go over here to the Trade It tab. So oh, you can see right here's the, here's the most recent bond trade that I've done in, in, the, in the most recent future. And this is the one that I'm in right now. So I'm going to zoom this in. And you can see that on this one, I don't have a target, but I do want to show you that I have my cents. So what I'm going to do on this is I will walk you through where I entered the trade from. So this is a five minute. So I'm going to go right click and I'm going to go format account orders and positions. And then I'll hit OK. So you can see from right here when I did this trade, the high water mark for this mark was 22, right? And it depends on where I'm drawing. Ah, here's my low. There's my eight tick reversal. Now, did I ever get stopped out on the trade? No. Did I get close? Well, it was one. It was at 4:30 seconds. So four more ticks below, and I would have got stopped out. So in this trade, if I do a one minute time frame, hold on, my charts are locking up here. Do you see? The example here, so there's my high, here's eight tick reversal, boom, and I get long. Instrument 30-year bond. Now, if I go back to a five-minute chart, let's say that you're not in this trade with me yet, okay? And let's say that you wanted to be in this trade with me. The bond market are up how many ticks today? It looks like they're up 12, 30 seconds. Do you see that? So first thing you got to do is you got to come over here and you got to go look at the bonds. Let's go at U.S. All right, so at U.S. on the bond market right now, they are in a daily uptrend because on Ichimoku, we're above the cloud, we're above the purple line, we're above the yellow line, and we've got a little bit of resistance we're going to have to deal with, right? The resistance here is going to be about 135 or 134 to 135. So we've got a limited amount of move to the upside, but we're already long, so we're going to stay long. Does everybody agree that we're in a valid uptrend? It's making higher highs and higher lows, and it's in a valid uptrend. Let's check the 60-minute chart. The 60-minute, anytime it goes above the cloud, it usually has two to five days bounce to the high side. You see how it jumped above the 60-minute here? There's one, two, three days, came back to the cloud. So that that situation here, we've got three days of bounce, and then we came back and revisited the cloud. We're popping here. We're looking good on the 60-minute. On the 10 minutes are long, too. All right, so we should be long. Now, good thing is I'm already long. You may not be long. How would you do this trade with me? Well. There's a couple different ways that you could do this trade. Number one, you could just count it off and go, okay, this is the most recent swing high that I'm in. And you can say the bonds are trading at 133 and 27, 30 seconds. And then you just count back eight. What, what would your entry be? 27 minus eight is what? What is that? What's 27 minus eight? Somebody do the math for me real quick. What is it? 15? 19, what is it? Lord of mercy, we've got all kinds of different answers. 19, right? So we would do 19, 30 seconds. So we'd want the bonds to come back here and pull back to 133 and 19, 30 seconds. We would risk five ticks, and our target would be 32 ticks. Pretty simple, right? Now, I, I like to make my life easier, so I build, build indicators to do this stuff. So what I would do is I'd just go right-click, insert analysis technique, and then I build indicators. I have everybody build indicators for me just because it makes my life easier. And I'd go, okay, plus one, eight tick, 16, 12. All right, cool. And then I would just go like this right here. I'd just go control, left click, and it'd go, all right, if you want to do an eight tick, it's here. If you want to do a 16 tick, it's here. If you want to do a, a eight, 12, or 16 tick, here's entry one, entry two, entry three. And then my targets are above, plus 10, plus 20, or plus 32. So I would just do that just because it would make my life a ton easier. You can do it several different ways. It does not matter which way you do it. Um, don't sweat it. If you if you don't like the uh, the calculating it up, it you know you can build your indicator. You could you know buy mine if you want to buy mine. Um, that's how it's set up. 
Now, there's another way that you can do it in the Trade It tab. You could just go, okay, where's the bonds at right now? Well, the bonds right now are up and they're rallying, and they had a high of 133 and 29, 30 seconds. And you could just go, okay, I want to be long in an eight tick reversal. You go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I should be long at 21 from the overall high of the day. Okay? Does that make sense? So any questions? You, you lost you lost me. All right. All right. Let me do this. Let me do the example one more time. Does everybody understand that the bonds are in a daily uptrend? Does everybody agree with that? Yes. All right. Then let me I'm gonna remove my indicator. Let me remove I'll just remove the entire indicator. I'll do it by hand so it won't confuse you. Now, if you know bonds are in a daily uptrend, there's two different places that you can basically do this trade. There is here, and there is here. Does everybody agree? You're either going to draw your eight tick reversal from this high or that high. That's as simple as it gets. It gets no simpler than that. If this is your high, and you can pick either point, you could either pick that swing high or this this swing high. If it's 27, then you're going to enter at 19, right? So you're going to let the market come down here. You would enter at this green line. Your stop loss would be five ticks below, right? Would be five ticks below. We'll make it red, and then your target would be 32 ticks higher than 90 than 133, 19, 30 seconds. It'd be 134 and 19, 30 seconds. Okay. So that's how easy this trade is to do. It is not hard. If uh, if this hillbilly from Kentucky can do it and make this type of money, you should be able to do it too. Now, like I said, it's a very low risk, high reward trade setup. I'm not saying that you won't lose any money. I'm saying you're only going to risk 156 to potentially make at least a thousand. Okay. So if you've already missed the trade that I'm in, you could do this next trade. Um, will there be some slippage? No. Look how thick the bond market is. It's very thick and very tight. So no, you won't experience any slippage. And you're not going to do them. Even if you do a market order, you're only going to get slipped like one tick. So it's not a big deal. All, all right. So you got to have good. Profits in order to have confidence, you got to have great money management. You've got to have good entries. With good entries, you're going to have to be required to have a good exit. And then, if you get all three of these combined together, then your profits will increase and then your confidence will increase. So, very, very important. You've got to have good trade setups. A good setup that goes executed will beat the pants off of a perfect setup that goes unexecuted. Good is good enough. Don't try to filter out all the losers and the stopouts. This is a fool's game and for suckers only. Enjoy the process. Go through some wins. Go through some losses. And obviously have fun while you're doing this. It's a very serious business. I want to make you a serious offer. Okay. So a lot of people, this is called my welcome mat offer. A lot of people ask me, what are my favorite trades? So what I did is I put a, a package together called my favorite trade setups now. I normally sell it for $197. You can have it today for a 50% discount. For $97, it's only for the first 50 people on this webinar, and you, there's two different ways that you can grab it, and I know they'll be posting it here in just a second. You can go to hubertcenters.com forward slash pub, hubertcenters.com forward slash pub. You can also order it by calling area code 859-963-3445. So I just showed you one of my favorite bond trading uh, setups. Now, in the course... What happens is it's a, a downloadable course where you can watch it as soon as you purchase it. Uh, it comes with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. So if you're not satisfied for any reason, we'll just give you your money back. That's just how we roll around here. Now, the business actually has my name on it, so I back everything that I sell 100%. Okay. Uh, any, any free stuff. I, I just gave you a free trade that will make you $1,000. That's the free stuff. Um, you, you can also, I do free videos over at hubertcenters.com. Uh, here's the offer again, hubertcenters.com forward slash pub, hubertcenters.com forward slash pub. There's the telephone number. This is what's in the course, okay? When you click the add to cart, you're going to say, it'll say learn to scan for day and swing trades and long-term uh, stock setups. Click add to cart, and then you'll see these videos as soon as you purchase the course. And this is an hour. This is 60 minutes. This is 60, 60. So it's seven hours of content. Seven hours of content. And then there's two hours of me live trading in front of you that I recorded 
So first I teach you theory for seven hours, and then I do live trading in front of you for two hours. Module one is called Swing Trades and Day Trades, where I teach you my favorite ways to scan the markets and my favorite ways to swing trade. The best way to scan the markets for day trades for stocks, how to filter out the best trades to take. That's module one. In module two, stocks and swing trades and day trades. I teach you the seven horsemen, and there's seven stocks that beat earnings 90% of the time, and then there's seven stocks that beat earnings 80% of the time. I'm going to teach you how to trade stock gap plays and teach you how to trade the gap and go setup. There's also a gap and crap setup that I teach you. That's in Module 2. In Module 3, there is, if I can hit the slide right, E-mini day trades, how to trade gaps on index futures, the ambush trade setup, the 85-115 trade setup, and the crescendo trade setup. And then in Module 4, we go over uh, the famous good night gold trade where I teach you how to risk $600 to potentially make $6,000. And that trade is a really, really good trade. And it's kind of one of the trades that has made me kind of famous. Um, there's the gold rush trade, which is a really good trade. And then there's the gold bug trade. And then in module five, there's bond swing trading and day trading. I already taught you the overnight bond trade, which is the 8, 12, and 16 tick reversal. And the sneak attack. So that is it. Here is the link again. I'll take questions if you have them. Um, I've got just a few seconds to answer questions. Uh, I just bought it. Thanks. Appreciate the fourth thing. Thank you very much, Jim. Do you use anything other than a five-minute chart for entries? It doesn't matter what time frame you use for entries. It could be a one-minute. It could be a five-minute. It's really based upon the price action, right? It's based upon the price of the from the high side. So um, that's what you're looking for. It doesn't matter what time frame, if you're using a one, a two, a three, a four, or a five, it does not matter at all. Okay. Uh, Renko range bars I found work nicely. Yep. And I know there's probably some people in here that have had the course, and this is this this will either go really, really good for me or horribly bad, right? If if you've taken the course and you had good uh, a good vibe from the course, just let me know. That it, good course, bad course, what'd you guys think? Uh, Euro USD. Um, I don't have enough time. I normally go through charts. Um, includes the bond indicator. It does not include the bond indicator. If you want to buy the bond, in bond indicator, that would be extra. Yes, exactly. When are you doing the gold trading course? Got ready, and it's slammed. The uh, gold trading course will probably be uh, in the next... 30 to 45 days. Uh, are you in a good night gold trade from yesterday? I am not. No. No. Yep. So I will give you one more look here at the markets really quickly. You can see the bond market here on this trade, which is a trade I just taught you. We are up on it of uh, $718, and I'll probably make my $1,000 today minimum. So, yeah. When will an options class be uh, looming? I think there's some other guys on here who will be teaching options in just a little bit. How long does it take to accept losing as a part of the trading? It, take, it takes different, uh, different people different time, yeah. Are, you update, uh, are these updated as opposed to the five-year-old stuff at TTM? Yes, these are updated, Jim, yes. Definitely updated, yes. Um, if you want a real deal, especially at hubertcenters.com forward slash pub. Thank you very much. Here is the telephone number. I'll post it for you one more time. I can hear people calling in the background, so I know they're going. Is scanning in the course available on TOS? Yeah, I teach you to use free sources for the scanning, so you don't really have to worry about whatever brokerage firm that you use. I teach you how to scan with free online tools. So, yes, it's, it's all included in there, Sandy. Uh, this is a two-part question. What is the correlation between futures and Forex? And does the DX, so futures on Forex, uh, there's always correlations in the different markets that you trade. Um, some of them work really good and some of them decouple. So correlations work until they don't. It's always really good to pay attention to them, but you can't really bank, them, bank on them all the time. Like a lot of times, if the index futures go up, uh, bonds and gold will go down. If bonds and gold go up, index futures will go down. But it doesn't always work. Same thing with Forex. Like they all switch around so much that you can't really um, bank on them always working. But it is, it is a nice thing to watch, though. Do you have a signal? Do I have a signal? 
Do I have a signal for what? Do you use do you utilize the bond auctions to determine trades? Uh, not usually. I usually just determine am I in a daily uptrend or a downtrend. And if I'm in a daily uptrend, I want to buy long. If I'm in a daily downtrend, I want to short retracements on an eight or a sixteen tick re reversal. I try to keep things super super simple, guys. The the more I make things complicated, the more money I lose. And as you can see, like right now, like if you look at the, at the video tab here, let's take a look at coffee. Act act. At KC, let me ask you a question. Do you guys think this is a an uptrend or a downtrend in coffee right here? It's a massive uptrend, right? So all I do is I get long some coffee. And as you can see over here in this trade, I'm long just a I'm just long I'm up twenty four ninety seven. Today I was up earlier, I was up mm, thirty five hundred. Same thing on bonds yesterday. Bonds were in an uptrend on a daily. I'm long those things. I'm gonna stay long them until my targets get hit. Or a balance area, dependent on the context. Uh, what if you covered today? What is what you covered today in the course? Yes, it is one of my favorite trades in the course. Yes. Do you utilize what is your SAR setting? A parabolic SAR is the. I think it's just a standard. Let me double check. It's 0 0.02 and 0 0.2. All right, I've ran out of time. I've went a little bit long, so I'm going to jump off here. Thanks for all the orders. I really appreciate it. Um, good luck. Hope it helps, and I'll see you on the next one. Morgan, thanks for having me, man.